Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the April 11th Town of Penfield Planning Board meeting. We have one public hearing this evening. Uh, we will hear the application. We have questions from the board and open it for questions from the audience. Following the public hearings, we'll deliberate in the back of the auditorium all matters before us. Should you have any questions after this hearing, please feel free to call the Planning Department office. Katie. Application number one, Randy Bebout, T.Y. Lynn International, 255 East Avenue, Rochester, New York, 14604, on behalf of Hess Corporation, requests under Articles 9-9-2 and 10-10-2 of the Code Preliminary and Final Site Plan Approval and an Expansion to an Existing Conditional Use Permit to allow the construction of a drive through lane and window and other associated site improvements at the existing Hess facility on 1.78 acres located at 2180 Penfield Road to be known as 2180 Penfield Road. The property is now formally owned by Hess Realty Corporation and is zoned general business and 250 overlay. Application number 13P-0013, SBL number 140.01-1-4. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Jerry Goldman. I'm the attorney and agent for Hess Corporation. Uh, with me this evening on this application are Pat McAndrew, who's the director of real estate, right to my right, and Randy Bebout, who is the engineer for the project from T.Y. Lynn International. Uh, we're pleased to come here tonight for an application for conditional use permit and site plan approval uh, for the Hess location on the northeast corner of Penfield Road and Route 250. Uh, the site is 1.787 acres, a pretty generous acreage for the activities which are here. Currently on the site are a Hess Express building and gas pumps, both of which will remain the same. Uh, the only changes to the site functionally are the addition of a drive-through component which wraps around the building as depicted on the site with bypass lanes, etc and of a change in the two co-brand users within the site, uh, within the building itself. We've met in concept with the planning board. We've also met with staff and reviewed the application. Uh, we have made a number of modifications uh, as a result of those meetings to try to address uh, any concerns with regard to the application. Uh, Randy will go through the changes, but primarily what we're trying to do is in some ways actually ameliorate a situation which is going on at the intersection with the plaza to the north and to in fact use some uh, directional tools to be able to help circulation within the site itself. Uh, so as not to take away from Randy's thunder, I'll turn it over to Randy now and if there are questions, we'll all be available to answer them. Thank you. Good evening. And for the record, I'm Randy Bebout with T.Y. Lynn. Um, just to pick up where Jerry left off. Um, so here in the, in the shaded areas, the, the new pavement uh, proposed for the site uh, for the operation of the drive-through. The main lane um, basically running adjacent to the building. Um, Pickup window here on the northwest side. And then exiting out here over onto the, into the existing access lane. And then we have provided a bypass lane. Um, so if a car decides to get into the drive through we have a means to get out of the drive through lane. Um, from the order window back to the order point, there's four cars. And then there's an additional seven cars um, sitting behind the car that's ordering going out to the front here. Um, we have delineated uh, the drive through uh, directional arrows and dr guiding people into the drive-through lane from both 441 and from uh, Fair Point, Fairport Nine Mile Point Road. And part of that, and as we've discussed and worked through this, is guiding cars around the south side of the existing canopy. We've provided some, uh, we'll, we'll be providing a sign here directing people into the drive-through with directional arrows and a, and a solid stripe directing cars to come around the south side of the canopy and then cut across with a stop bar here um, at this intersection and then to directing them across to the drive-through lane. 
We have provided uh, landscaping along the north edge up here. Uh, there's a five foot buffer area there between the pavement and the property line. And those are an evergreen uh, species that will provide uh, buffer year round. And then uh, with that, we've, from our submission back in, we, we made a submission on March 1st, which addressed the, the prior PRC comments and the board comments. I won't go through them in, in great detail other than to kind of highlight the things that are uh, more important. Um, there was a question about the plant species, which we have changed to be more salt tolerant. We have added just to the plan really for clarity, we had added a bunch of uh, existing features that weren't there originally as far as the locations of the islands under the canopy. Um, added some of the stripes that were, were there at one point that need to be restriped, which really helped define the circulation patterns. Um, and then just some of the other features to help the plan, to make the plan a little easier to follow. One of the items that uh, we talked about uh, probably a fair amount in the, at the last meeting was the car wash operation fundraising events that occur along this south uh, curb edge probably more particularly the car wash and the function of that and, and how are we going to handle that. So uh, the, the way we've addressed that and it was spelled out in the letter was the, we've delineated four parking spaces along this edge. We determined from not only uh, really visual observations of, of aerials but from our, our prior parking, parking study that we had submitted that cars are parking there. So we've delineated this, this area which in, in relation to the car wash events will allow us to uh, the fundraising crew to park cars in those areas, be running the car wash operation and further um, store operations providing kind of a coning off that area so that the, the kids, young students, parents while that operation is going on are a little further protected um, so that that operation can still continue uh, without impacting uh, the store operations. We, th we think that's a reasonable solution uh, to that concern. And the rest of the March 1st response letter addressed the, um, the Article 9, Section 9, 3 factors to consideration, um, which really just addresses some of the pedestrian traffic circulation, stormwater stuff. Uh, items. I won't go through those bit by bit. Uh, certainly if the board has any questions on those, I'd be glad to answer those. And then we also address the Section 10.4, the standards governing conditional uses, which again kind of address a lot of the uh, same type of items as far as ingress and the food vendors. The, we did receive the PRC comments. Um, and had just recently, uh, as early as this week, had responded to those. Um, most of those comments from the town engineer, Jeff Benway, and I'll just walk through the highlights of those. The, there was a request to increase this uh, inside drive-through lane to 12 feet. We did not do that, and, and for the reasons being, um, we do have a 20-foot clear area here, curb to curb, which provides adequate turning movement around this radius. And the plan does show cars sitting here, but that was really just to, to, you know, to uh, depict that there is a bypass lane there. There's plenty of room for cars to get by. You know, the likelihood that uh, a car will be there as, as this car is turning will be fairly infrequent because we don't anticipate uh, a significant amount of people jumping out of the drive through lane. So we wanted to hold that 20 feet because if we did have to increase that inside lane to 12, the result was gonna be either we would need to narrow up this buffer or we would need to reduce this inside radius, which was a concern originally of town staff. Um, so that was the, I think that was like, that was the only comment that we really didn't address. Um, the rest of the, some of the other comments were adding a stop bar here. We had originally had a yield sign here. Um, uh, Mr. Benway suggested that we turn that into a stop sign and a stop bar, which we've done. There was a question about the canopy on the, at the pickup window and whether we had adequate clearance, and we do, that is remaining, we do have adequate clearance for that. Um, we've added a sign at the drive through entrance, do not block road signs, just in other words, we wanna encourage people not to, if, if this happened to be out to here, um, encourage people not to sit here and block this lane. 
far as the grading plan, there was some questions about uh, adding some additional information about storm flows and about the underdrain. Some of that information uh, was on the plans and we've further clarified some of the other information. There was a question uh, not only from Jeff, but also from the county about the stormwater flows uh, to the DOT system. What, the, the stormwater basin sits here. Um, there's a basin and the outlet pipe discharge out to this system. Um, we will be submitting um, a, a stormwater memo, which we had submitted to the town. We're gonna expand on that a little bit and submit that to DOT for their review. Um, in a nutshell, the stormwater increases are pretty minimal. Uh, really insignificant because this is a this stormwater pond is an infiltration system, um, so we don't we don't uh, anticipate any issues with that. Utility plan comments uh, were really technical stuff. Um, probably the biggest thing there there was a he had recommended that we install a mountable curb on the inside radius here, coming out of the drive-through lane after you leave the window. So we have revised that. Um, I think the concern was there maybe a, uh, a truck or a bigger vehicle might end up jumping the curb and that would just give them a means to, uh, so they don't run into the side of a vertical curb. And then there was a question on the landscape plan, uh, a recommendation to provide additional plantings along the outside patio area of the subway, which we have done, and use the same species uh, that's here along this buffer area. So with that, uh, that kind of addresses, goes through all the comments that we've addressed. I'll be uh, more than glad to answer any questions that the board may have. Wrap up with one, with one thought before we get to questions. I uh, would like to point out that this is a no variance plan. It is a plan which is fully conforming with all the town code requirements. Like I said, we have a 3,500 square foot building. Uh, we have the, the gas pumps as depicted over here on a 1.787 acre site, which is pretty generous in the whole scheme of things. The effort really has been concentrated in the staff comments and everything else on dealing with traffic calming in that particular area uh, near the intersection. As you can tell, there is cross access with our neighboring plaza. There is an island, so there isn't a, a real serious driving, uh, uh, speed driving going through here. So the whole objective is really to try to uh, is to try to manage uh, all the um, all the issues which uh, the board may have. With that, we'd be glad to answer any questions that you have. Well, you answered question number one about the variances, so thank you for that. Um, about the car stacking, what do you have other sites that have this type of uh, scenario or layout not necessarily the you know the way it's all laid out from a physical standpoint but with the co-branding and uh burger king drive through at the site and and what has been your experience with the maximum you know at the busiest time how many cars do you get stacked up and I don't know if you have any insight on that. The, the, the response I have to that is we, as part of our original traffic volumes, we did look at the one in uh, Tarpon Springs, Florida that um, has a similar operation. That's one of the few that is, is in operation. Um, our company's experience with drive-through is, you know, based on uh, the use here that this should be more than adequate as far as stacking. I mean, 11 cars, um, we always like to think that if it's more than that, then probably operationally something, you know, might not be working right. Um, so we're, we're pretty Faster comfortable. workers. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty comfortable with this, with this amount of stacking. Um, certainly we, you know, we, we want business to be good, but I, I think, you know, this is a more than adequate stacking compared to probably most drive-through sites that you look at where you may have a building that's closer to the street and, you know, you would be backing up towards the, the entrance drives. Thinking about the McDonald's across the street, and it gets stacked up pretty, pretty heavily. Cars there, but if if you could comment, if you have any experience, that would be terrific. Max, the normal max is about seven or eight. That's always what we target is at least seven or eight, and. 
we don't have that many drive throughs to be honest with you. This is our second Burger King drive through but we have plenty of Dunkin' Donut drive throughs one in, in Brockport you may, may be familiar with. Uh, I would say as long as we have enough coverage for seven, that is 95% of the time going to be adequate. One other thing to point out with regard to it is that this is not a full-service Burger King operation. It is a Burger King Express, so there are limited menu offerings. So in essence, the objective is speed, to get people in, to get people out, to keep people moving throughout. And that's, that's exactly what it is. And with the bypass lane available, uh, certainly if people start getting into this area, they can escape and can get out, and most people don't want to wait that long. So this is one of those Burger Kings where you cannot have it your way? <laughs> with, For all you old folks. With qualification. <laughs> with qualification. You're absolutely right. It's, you, have to have, you have to have it our way. Have it our That's way. It. That's it. <laughs> okay. Um, how often do you foresee that escape lane being utilized? You know, is it really just for, you know, our there's PRCs, some value. There's some uh, value. There's some value with sometimes the screaming kids or somebody deciding that they just don't don't want to wait or don't have time to wait. I mean, it's relatively early on in the uh, in the uh, scheme of things. So, if people see that they're going to have a problem, they're gonna they could go around. Uh, there is some real value in doing it, and like you said. Like uh, Randy pointed out, we aren't really adding that much impervious service to the site, and we have addressed the drainage aspects of it. Okay. Uh, busiest projected times. Which meals? Really uh, lunch. Ta lunch. It's about 15% is breakfast of the total Burger King business. Uh, I don't know the breakdown, lunch versus dinner, but lunch is clearly between 11 and 2 is the busiest uh, day part for Burger King. I don't know the exact percentage, but and would it be busier during the week? Do you anticipate versus weekends or yes, just the yeah. same? Friday is normally the busiest day. Usually, it increases as the week goes on. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then it drops back down Saturday and Sunday is always the slowest day. Okay, and then the same drive-through would be for Dunkin' and for Burger King. Is a, a Burger King drive-through? It's a Burger King drive-through, so you can't get donuts or. Yeah, I mean, if somebody, donuts. They, they serve coffee. If somebody wants yeah. a cup of coffee, the, the coffee served would be, would be Dunkin'. But beyond that, uh, okay. they're, they're not serving their own coffee. So it's not an incremental coffee being so served. So if you want donuts, you've got to go into the store. Yes. Or go to the real Dunkin' right. Donuts. That's correct. You need your exercise to, if you're getting a donut. You have to, right. go, you have to physically go inside. Work it off on the that's 15 it. steps back to the vehicle. Pretty much that's it. <laughs> uh, just that just so you know, from a competitive point of view, uh, the franchisee, the owner of the Duncan, further up the road than the one also in Penfield, is participating in the store. It's not a competitive situation. This is really a complementary situation. And, yeah. and when you take a look at it, it, it does provide a traffic benefit to the extent if someone wants Duncan and they're traveling north, they don't have to make lefts in, lefts out yep. to go to, uh, what do we call it, Webster, I think that place up north. <laughs> uh, you know, so they don't have to do that uh, if, this, uh, if this facility is here. Okay. The other thing, there's scuttlebutt. Somebody read an article in the Wall Street Journal that Hess is divesting from retail gasoline operations or something S corporate like that. did what's, did make the, the did make that, that statement we were requested to provide a letter from Hess corporate indicating that they were going forward uh, with this uh, with this proposal and what they intend to do um, we are we are told that regardless this is going forward and in the way of the business world we don't anticipate that anything is going to happen in a quick time frame okay all right um. I think that's all the questions I have at the moment. Thanks. Yeah, just one question about the, uh, you said it's going to be a different type of burger changer. Is uh, that going to be cooked in uh, hamburgers, french fries, and I'm going to grease? I'm told it's a limited menu. And, and what, I think, what I think that means is that it's designed for speed. I don't know exactly what the change in the menu items are, though. My concern is obviously the ventilation. Yeah. Obviously, if there's going to be we are we are serving burgers and fries and but it has a, a hood with a fire suppression system. 
So it's it's a very, very high tech, very, very expensive hood, but we will be preparing burgers there. And that's going to be a whole new ventilation system that's not presently on the property, correct? That is correct. We have a hood there today for our Godfather Pizza. That's coming out, and then we're replacing the hood, though, with a, a bigger and better one for Burger King. About, like, grease storage for... Yeah, there is an existing grease trap uh, for the facility. It's located in this in this back corner over here. Um, and we did the original design of that, so we were familiar with that. <clears throat> they could convert it to uh, diesel fuel, right? Correct. All the grease? <laughs> right on site. Uh, question about landscaping. Um, we... Uh, we do have a letter here from Bruce Zaretsky, our landscape consultant, and he, he identified uh, 26 existing trees on site to be removed, and I don't know if that's accurate or not. It didn't, didn't look like that when I looked at the plan, but he also recommended some uh, additional deciduous trees, and I don't see any new additional tree, uh, deciduous trees on your plan. And it seems like there's a few locations where it might be advantageous to have some shade trees in there yeah i mean we could i don't know if the preference is um we we do have some colorado spruces on this side and then we had more over here we could replace those with deciduous trees if that was a preference of the board because you're right there is some deciduous trees on the banks of this existing pond today um, so those could be the species of those could be changed out and we'd be open to suggest. I don't, know, I don't know about changing out, but adding to. Or adding to, okay. And how about on the other side there near the uh, drive through In this area here? Right. Yeah, we, we are putting some bushes around the reload because we're relocating the transformer. I think there's a, I believe, if I recall correctly, there's some, uh, I think there's a couple evergreen trees in there today that are, are getting impacted. So we could look at uh, adding some landscaping in there. Yeah, I think just some shade trees would be okay. helpful. Okay. That, the number seems high. I don't think it's, I, I didn't recall that it was 26. I can look at that. You might be counting shrubs That's probably and trees. Yeah. yeah. I want to say there's a half a dozen uh, trees on the bank of that pond that uh, we are impacting. I, I just have another, are you, are you still asking? Um, regarding the car wash, I guess I'm going to call them operations uh, that you uh, allow for, uh, all the nonprofit, you know, teams and all that uh, to do. Do you foresee this having a big impact on that? I mean, I see the the drive-through lane really is delineated to go through that area where they have the drive uh, the car washes. Um, I, you know, honestly. I don't see people using that lane. I mean, let's be real. Uh, most people are going to cut across. I mean, me for one, probably. Uh, You're coming in off of Penfield Road. I'd come in off Penfield Road. True. Uh, I don't really foresee that being a problem, but I just wanted to, you know, if somebody's watching on TV that, hey, you know, my baseball team's having a car wash there. Am I going to be impacted from that? Uh, and that's they why I probably we, won't because I every I drive by that three four times a day every weekend there's some activity last weekend there's a you know, robotics right. team I think out and that was the, the weather, discussion kind of we had with the operations and and again being able to delineate these spaces where the car wash could occur yes we are guiding people here and the thought was if we could cone off some of that area to provide an additional buffer to the, the you know to separate the the traffic and, and the people standing there doing the operations. Um, so, I mean, we think that was a, a good solution to, uh, you know, accommodate the, the, the customers of the store, but accommodate the fundraising and providing a, a good level of safety. Yeah, the and that's thing, just for the right, it's a nice thing that you guys do. So I don't want to. Thank you. The other thing that uh, Pat pointed out is that mornings are not really a peak. To my mind, very often the car washes occur on Saturday mornings. So yeah. I don't think it's really going to conflict with. Well, that was also one of the reasons why traffic. I wanted to know when the busiest 
right lunch times were whether it was during the week or on the weekends because those factors all come into play as to boy is that going to be crazy uh, you know on a Saturday during a car wash or or is it going to be manageable so our thought we we think we can comfortably accommodate everything thanks I'm, I'm good ask a quick question here because I don't see it is the parking that you were trying to encourage on the outside ring is that going to be delineated parking places yes okay yeah we are striking that so we're showing four spaces there well thank you <laughs> any other questions anyone in the audience Thank you, gentlemen. Thank we'll you very much. Close Thank this you. public hearing.